Hello everybody, it's Kim. Today I have another canning recipe for you and it's going to help me use up my abundance of zucchini. Now I did a video previously where I made mock zucchini pineapple. I'm telling you it turned out wonderful. I'm very happy with it. I have 11 pints of that. So I decided to make something else. Went on the internet, did a huge search and found pineapple jelly that you can flavor however you want. So let me show you what the ingredients are and then I'll go ahead and show you what it, how to make it. It starts out with peeled, I take out the center, that soft part, and shredded zucchini. You're going to need six cups. You need some sugar. Now, the recipes vary in that, anywhere from two to six cups. The average seems to be at least four cups of sugar, so I'm going to use four cups. Then you're supposed to have pineapple, the, um, not the tidbits, the crushed pineapple. Well, I didn't have any crushed pineapple. I'm using what I have in my kitchen. I'm not going to the store. So I took these pineapple chunks. You drain it. So, of course, I saved the juice, and then I ran it in my Ninja just a little bit, and now I have crushed pineapple. So you need one 20-ounce can. What you should be using is crushed pineapple. Then you're going to need some lemon juice. Again, this varies, but you need the lemon and the pineapple in order to get the tartness so that this will last on your shelves. So I have seen between two tablespoons and a half a cup. I'm going to go with the half cup because I would prefer to make sure that it's going to be tart enough to last. And then the secret ingredients is whatever flavor gelatin that you want to use. Now you normally need one six ounce box. I don't have six ounce box so I have two three ounce boxes of gelatin. It did not specify whether it's regular or sugar free. I only have sugar free so that's what I'm using. Okay, so there's my ingredients. Let me show you very quickly how I did the zucchini. I'm just going to show you a quick still photo that I took where I take out the center part. Okay, the process starts with six cups of your shredded zucchini which for me was two um, fairly large zucchini that weighed about four and a half pounds before I peeled and took out that core. And you're going to bring these up to a uh, boil and then you're going to simmer them for 20 minutes until they become rather translucent and cook through. During that time I have my canner on with the water now this happens to be a pressure canner. You do not have to use a pressure canner. I loaned out my water bath canner and this one is plenty big to cover my jars by at least an inch so I'm using that today. And I have my jars in the oven to warm up because if you recall you never put hot liquids into a cold jar or cold canning water. So I'm going to do the cooking process when I'm done with that, I'll be back to add my other ingredients. Okay, my zucchini has been cooked. Of course, I made sure to stir it so it wouldn't, you know, every now and then so it wouldn't stick. But it does release a lot of water. And I made sure I had all my other canning supplies ready. If you need to know what those are, I will link a video in the description that I did showing all of the canning supplies that I use. And please make sure to read the pinned comment because there was a couple things I forgot. They're not really important, but I wanted you to know everything that I have. So now that my zucchini is has been cooked, you can see it's pretty much broken down. You can see through the zucchini. I need to add, I'm going to add that half cup of lemon juice. I'm adding my crushed pineapple. Remember it's been drained. Okay, I'm going to stir that together briefly. 
Then I'm going to add all of that sugar, okay? So basically you're adding all the rest of the ingredients except for the jello or the, you know, flavored gelatin, whichever you choose to use. So, whoop, here goes my sugar. I'm going to stir that in. And you need to bring this to a full rolling boil. Once it comes to that full rolling boil, you're going to need to pretty much stir it constantly. Hopefully, you know, sometimes when you make jelly, it rises up. And I'm really hoping my pan is big enough here once I get to that full boil stage. When I get to that full rolling boil, I will show you what that looks like. And I'm going to need to stir that pretty much continuous for six minutes. Okay? You need to get that up to temperature so that this will gel. We're not using any pectin. If you want, the reason I'm using this is because it does not use pectin. If you have it available in your area, which we do not, I have been having trouble finding it, you can add a box of pectin. It can make it rather firm. If you like a really firm jelly or jam, you can add the pectin. I'm choosing not to do that because it's not available in my area. I'm also choosing to use the strawberry gelatin because we didn't have any strawberries this year either. I was lucky to get one case. So I want to have a strawberry flavored jam for my toast in the winter. I like to eat a lot of toast in the winter with my fresh summer flavors. So I'm going to bring this to a full rolling boil over medium high heat. I will then turn it down to whatever it takes to keep that rolling boil, and I'm going to stir it for the full six minutes. And I will be back when it comes to a full boil so I can show you what it looks like. All right, we're just about there. You can see it is boiling, but if you look, what I call a rolling boil is when you stir it, it should still seem to be boiling. You can see it's not quite at that big, huge, full boil because I could still stir it and it does not appear to be boiling. Now that should happen quite quickly here. We want to make sure that this comes up to boil. Now in the meantime, if you want, you could put, I should have done this in the beginning, a small um, glass dish in the freezer, because there's also a way to tell if it's going to gel the way you want, and that's once you get to the point where you believe it's thick enough, you put it on a frozen plate and it should gel within a few seconds of what consistency, you're pretty close to what you want. Now see, I'm still able to see that boil in there now. Can you see there's still some boil coming up no matter how much I stir this? This is what we're looking for. We want it to get to the point where you cannot stir it down because it just keeps on bubbling through. So you know it's getting beyond the point of 212 degrees. You want this to reach about 220 degrees. If you have a thermometer, you can use that. Um, you know, I just, if you have a candy thermometer. Otherwise, you know, you do it the old-fashioned way like me, and you don't have a lot of equipment. You just figure it out. And I hate to tell you, if it's too thin, it makes a great ice cream topping. So I don't worry about it too much. I don't like my jelly or my jam so thick that I can't spread it on my toast. There. Now see, those bubbles are way past the point where I could stir them down. So I want to do this while stirring for, for a full six minutes. So I'm going to set my timer. Okay, as it starts to thicken, it might start spitting up at you, so gently turn your heat down while maintaining this rolling boil. You don't want it, you know, spurting up on you and getting on you and burning you, because again, it's above the boiling point. 
I still have a boil coming. It's not quite as hard, but it's still coming through. So I'm going to continue to stir this. Now I am scraping the bottom the entire time. I have, oh, about two minutes to go. And just before it's done, I will come back and we'll go on to the next step here. All right, my alarm is going off. The next step is to add your gelatin. Remember, six ounces, whether it be one six ounce package or, in my case, two three ounce packages. I want to stir this in really well and continue to boil for one more minute. I want to make sure that that gelatin is very well combined in here. Starting to give it that pretty red color. Now it's not going to be as red as if you put straight strawberries in here, but it gives it a pretty color. Also, according to some people, and it's not recommended very often, if you do not like the little pieces in here, you can puree it with the stick blender. I like to have mine more like a jam anyway, so it doesn't bother me. I've got to get this up to a boil again. I want to make sure i got a couple of spots where the jelly or gelatin hasn't quite dissolved, so I'm trying to mix that in really well. We're going to bring that up to a boil for one more minute, and then I want to make sure it gels to the point that I like it. So when I get to that point, hopefully, I didn't think to put my plate in early enough, but hopefully it's cold enough that we can at least do a little test here and see if it's close to the jelly stage that I like. So, all right, let's get this melted up here. Starting to thicken up nicely. You can feel the difference. You can really start to feel it thicken. After you put, well, as it was cooking, I could feel it start to thicken really nice. But now I'm really starting to feel that. Now, I would suspect if you do not have gelatin, you could take some of the unflavored gelatin and put that, you have to bloom it in some cold water. You put about a quarter cup of cold water. You could use that and a package of flavoring, maybe like a Kool-Aid or the store brand Kool-Aid unflavored stuff, although it won't have as much sugar, so then I would use the full six cups of sugar. Um, you do not have to use the Jello. You get a kind of a lemony flavor, uh, maybe a lemony honey flavor with just the um, pineapple and the lemon juice in there. It's pretty mild. It doesn't taste like a whole lot, but it would probably be good on biscuits. Um, you know, um, if you have pectin, like I said, you could add that and some kind of flavoring of your choice. Maybe you could add half as much fruit, so you have actual fruit besides pineapple in there. But the pineapple and the lemon juice are necessary to get this to gel at this point. But I'm going to follow the directions. There's, I wish I knew who the original person was that made this, but there are literally hundreds and hundreds of pretty much the same recipe on the Internet that I looked through. They all are pretty much the same except for some of the you know, amounts on things. Now, I know it's probably been close to a minute. i rather go over than under, in my opinion. My timer's across the room, and I didn't want to stop stirring this. So I am going to finish this up and go get my plate and get ready to put these in the jar so I can show you. All right, let me show you this. This plate is not super, super cold, but if you take just a little bit, and you put it on your plate, you should see it start to gel. You may have to stick it back in the freezer for a minute, but it's starting to gel a little bit there. It should be much colder than that. See, it still looks a little runny. A little bit runnier than I would like. Let me taste it. Definitely tastes like strawberry 
kind of like strawberry jello jam. So I'm going to cook this for another minute. I want to get make sure, since I'm not adding pectin, I could probably add something like clear gel because I do have that, but I just want to make sure that this is really well gelled. I know they say let it cool completely for at least 48 hours before you make up your mind. And I will do that, but it definitely has a good flavor. Not quite like fresh strawberry, but you know what? My grandkids will like it. It's a little sweet for me with four cups of sugar and that gelatin mix in it. I'm not sure how it would gel with a lot less sugar in there. I did put what I think is the minimum according to the recipes I saw. I saw one that said she used two cups of sugar and said it worked okay, but I would assume she probably had to boil it a lot longer. So Anyway, we're going to get ready to put this in jars, and we'll be right back. All right, I did one more full minute, and this one I timed, and I could feel it really start to thicken up. So I think we're where we need to be. All right, next step is I'm going to move you back here a little bit. I need to get my jars out of the oven. Let me find my hot pads. All right, here it is. I'm going to get out just a few jars at a time because I can only do so many. That's going to be a later one. I like to do like four or five at a time and keep the other ones warm that way. Then I can wipe my lids and put them in the can or while it's going. Okay, I have my funnel and my nice stainless steel ladle. Now, not any of the recipes I could find said what headspace to do. So I'm going by basic jelly headspace, which is a quarter, a half to a quarter inch. I would rather err on the side of a little too much than not enough. That's probably a little bit low. This is my half. It's just right about a half, just under a half, so I'm going to... After I fill these, I like to use a teaspoon and just add a little bit at a time. Okay, I hope I'm not in your way too much. But when I work with something this hot, I have to worry about my safety. And I can't quite... I'm not one of those professional chefs on TV that you can go from different directions, so... Anyway, one of the things that fascinated me about this recipe was I knew a lady many years ago, my kids were very, very young, that would use um, Jello, I mean Kool-Aid, to as flavors for her for her um, jellies because she couldn't afford the fruit. And that's right at a half inch. So I thought, you know, they were really good. If she didn't tell you, you wouldn't know if it was real grape jelly or something else and it was just basically the sugar the kool-aid or whatever it was sometimes she would use bottled and i did that when my kids were very young my husband and i were were very poor at the time i would take juices that my kids got from things like wick and i would make jelly out of them okay those are all right around a half inch so I'm going to go like I said between them I'm going to add one more spoonful to each jar and they should all be under that quarter inch then let me check now this is my quarter inch yes they definitely have at least a quarter inch there and the next step is going let me move this side of the way a little bit I have to take a paper towel as you've seen, if you've watched any of my other videos, I take my vinegar and I very carefully, without trying to burn myself on the jars, you want to make sure there's absolutely nothing stuck to these jars. And of course, before they went in the oven, I run my finger around the rims to make sure there's absolutely no chips in them, anything that has a chip becomes a storage container for dry products. 
You don't want to use anything with the chip. There we go. Wipe my rims. And let me see where I put my jar lifter, my lid lifter. It was right here. Let me find that. Where did I put it? Here it is. Okay. So I have, I have these in warm water. I bring it to just a simmer, and then I turn off the heat. Some of your new rims, your lids, excuse me, you cannot boil. I do not care for the ball brand. I've had so many problems with those. The seals, I don't think they have as much of the rubber on them anymore. And a lot of people have complained about their things coming unsealed. I've noticed that with my ball lids. If it's all you can find, just be aware to check them very carefully. Now I'm going to do finger tight. I'm not cranking it. I'm just going as far as my fingers will tighten it. Okay, I'm not just, I'm not even cranking it down. I'm, that's as tight as my fingers will take it. That's all I want. Sometimes my, my, lit, my rings are a little bit older and they start to get a little kind of crooked or bent a little bit so they don't go on quite as much so I have to get them started easily okay finger tight these are going in the canner I'm going to do the rest of the jars and I'm going to water bath those for 10 minutes so I will be back after they're all in the canner all right my jars are in the canner waiting to come back to a boil the fun part is I have about that much left I got nine of the half pints and that much left that's going in the refrigerator and I'm going to be able to test that out really quick once it cools off enough we'll be able to see how it looks so we'll check that out as soon as it's cool all right everybody oh they look so pretty everyone's popped I've had this one in the refrigerator for about an hour and a half as you could see it's starting to set up pretty decent it's kind of like I like it. I don't like it really solid. I like kind of a soft jelly that will spread on my toast. And I think it's going to work just fine, especially once it's been in the refrigerator overnight. So there you go. I'm really happy with that. Give it a big, oh, that's a big taste. Let's give it a taste. The pineapple gives it a little bit of texture, which is kind of nice. It's got, you know, pineapple texture to it. The flavor is really nice. It doesn't taste so much like Jello to me, but it is a little on the sweet side. I guess jelly should be really sweet. But it's definitely something I would make again. And I think if I do it again, if I get enough zucchini... I'm going to do maybe a peach flavor since we didn't get any peaches this year either. Unfortunately, we had a big heavy frost after everything bloomed and my, everything fell off my peach tree. So all in all, I'm really happy with the recipe. And I think it's worth a try if you want to have something for winter. If you do, let me know. Let me know what you think. Let me know what flavor you made. And I hope... Uh, if you have any questions, you'll leave me a message below. Have a great day, everybody.